Running a marathon is different than a 100 meter dash. So too, a protracted flood fight takes on new dimensions as time progresses. That reality is playing out in the greater Omaha community, including Bellevue, as well as neighboring Council Bluffs in Iowa, as those communities face floodwaters against their levees. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is working with local and state entities to strengthen several of those levees to either prevent or respond to a degree and severity of seepage that's developing. The longer water remains against a levee, the longer that water is able to exert pressure on the structure or the foundation beneath it to take advantage of any porous qualities. By its very nature, water will seek to balance the pressure on both sides of a levee. Over time, that pressure pushes water through porous material in and under the levee. That water, combined with groundwater and interior runoff in the soil, may begin to pond on the landward side of the levee. Seepage during a flood is natural and is to be expected. But we want to assess those seepage conditions to see if the water is coming through clear, slowly, uh, whether boils might be um, forming that, that might be bringing through some soil material. And if it's moving soil material, you know, that, could be, that means that it's moving soil material for under the levee. So we assess those conditions and decide what do we need to do for each of those. Sometimes we just monitor it a little closer. Sometimes it looks fine just the way that water might be coming in. If water's coming in at all, some areas don't seep much at all. To control under seepage, some levees are constructed with a seepage berm, an added area of soil built on the landward side of the levee. The seepage berm allows pressure to dissipate and lengthens the seepage path. In Omaha, Council Bluffs, and Bellevue, there are both types of levees, those constructed with seepage berms and those constructed without them. The Corps has worked with those communities to identify which levees and areas could best benefit from the installation of a new seepage berm or the extension of an old one. On June 28th, we took an aerial inspection of this area, which is our 616 levee on the Missouri River and we identified some seepage areas with some sand boils. Uh, we went up with our sponsor, Papula NRD. Uh, we had an area here at this location where we were having a lot of pesky sand boils. The, the Corps was here helping us, you know, look and locate those. And in fact, the Corps located the first one in this area by the air. Uh, it was out in the field, uh, 100 feet and uh, underwater and tough to see from the levee and so uh, that aerial surveillance was was key to locating that. As we started bagging we we would uh, sandbag one boil and get it under control where it was running clean and uh, it'd pop up another area just outside. Uh, requested assistance uh, from the Corps and uh, the Corps was here again. So the response was quick and immediate and uh, it sure gave me a great relief to have the 4th of July that I could not have to be out here sandbagging. But I'll tell you, my guys are very appreciative that we're not having to be out here. It looks like the blanket's doing a great job and uh, it's really uh, serving the purpose and uh, it's gonna provide a lot more restful sleep. Depending upon the unique circumstances at each of the areas, the Corps is using three different approaches to installing seepage berms. They all basically function as this filter layer for the seepage water. Uh, but they're designed a little different each time depending on the characteristics of the, the ground they're built on. Whether it's firm, whether it's soft, whether there's standing water on it, um, what kind of a traffic it can take from a construction equipment, whether we'll be building it off the levee or down at the toe of the levee. So a lot of factors go into the design of that filter layer. Sometimes they then use two layers of sand with rock on top, sometimes just one layer of sand. Sometimes the rock's not necessary, sometimes they put in that filter fabric, and sometimes they uh, don't put in that filter fabric. But again, it's based on the conditions that they're facing in that area where they want to put in these seepage berms. As the summer progresses, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers continues to work with local and state entities to identify levee structures that need additional strengthening. You don't often see a, a flood. You don't wish for a flood, but uh, seeing this event and being a part of it uh, is maybe a light once in a lifetime sort of thing. And so at times, uh, you know, I'd like to make it all go away, but at times I'm going, well, I've seen the fruits of our labors, you know, here. For more information on levees and the flood of 2011, follow us on Facebook and Twitter.